I have here with me today two professors from the University of Copenhagen, Denmark, who are experts in the field of solubilization. We have Professor Thomas Reds and Professor Annette Mullertz, both from the Department of Pharmacy. So thanks for joining us. Let's start with you, uh, Professor Thomas. You gave a presentation about amorphous solid dispersion. And in your talk, you mentioned that the, prep the preparation method really matters for amorphous systems. Could you elaborate on this point? Yes, uh, I'm happy to. <laughs> so amorphous systems are, are different to, crys to crystalline systems in the fact that it really matters how, how we prepare them. So if you are thinking of the energy landscape in which an amorphous material sits, it's not sitting in one of the minima, it is actually sitting on the slope. So depending on the method we're using, we are landing somewhere else in the energy landscape, and that will have consequences for the stability of the amorphous material, maybe for its dissolution rate, even for the degree of supersaturation that we can achieve. So if I prepare an amorphous material by spray drying or by uh, melt quenching or I use a milling process, then it will be always an amorphous material, but its properties can in, in fact differ quite, quite a bit. And um, it's well known that the challenge in preparing solid dispersion is the API loading into the polymer, right? Uh, can you perhaps explain what factors affect drug loading in the polymer and how do you determine the drug solubility in the polymer? It is um, a very important question because if you want to have a stable, practically stable amorphous system, you have to stay below the saturation solubility of the drug in the polymer. So it is important that we figure out how much drug can I really load into the polymer without risking uh, crystallization of the drug or precipitation. So to answer that, you can use several uh, experimental techniques. Um, you can also try to use um, computational methods to do that and, and there are different different ways how to determine the solubility. The problem is that we try to determine the solubility in a solid. So we have a, a drug that has to be molecularly dispersed in a polymer that is also a solid. So we cannot take a usual methods uh, like a shake flask method or something like that to determine the solubility. What most people do is to determine the solubility of the drug at higher temperatures which is then in a more liquid state and there are methods how to how to do that. Uh, they are often DSC, uh, differential scanning calorimetry based, and you're determining the solubility at elevated temperatures, and then you can extrapolate back to room temperature in order to get an estimate of the solubility of the drug in the polymer. 